Steve Ritter woke up on the morning of June 28, 1969. It was his 18th birthday and he planned to celebrate at the renowned Stumwall Inn. After finding a slimming black and white cocktail dressed from his mother's closet, he dressed and assumed the name Maria for the night. Drawing from experience, Maria took the precaution of bringing along some male street clothes. Better safe than sorry. Maria arrived at Stonewall at 10 p.m., ready for a night of drinking and dancing, surrounded by gays, lesbians, transvestites, and others like her who didn't conform to society's expectations. It was her safe haven, a place of refuge. It was June 28, 1969, and although Maria didn't know it, this would become a pivotal night in LGBTQ history. That night, she would take part in riots that would reshape the way society treated and viewed homosexuals, changing their futures forever. For years before the riots, members of the LGBTQ community faced decades of oppression, discrimination, cruel treatment, and ignored acts of violence. These tragedies ultimately resulted in the violent Stonewall riots that launched a turning point in social and legislative reform. Here began a new era of better protection and acceptance of gay and transgender people and a triumph over LGBTQ oppression. Same-sex relationships between men had been considered sinful for centuries, listed as sociopathic personality disturbance by the American Psychiatric Association in 1952. In the late 1950s, homosexuality was considered illegal in 49 states, punishable by fines or prison. As of 1917, LGBT people were barred from immigrating to the United States. Doctors who sought to cure homosexuality subjected hundreds of gay men to malicious experiments, including castration, hypnosis, and conversion therapy. Homosexuality is, in fact, a mental illness, which has reached epidemiological proportions. We can debate uh, uh, what is an illness uh, or whether it is an illness or not. I happen to subscribe to the belief that it is a tragic illness. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Proving to be ineffective, these barbaric treatments caused tremendous suffering. The 50s were already a time of great change in civil unrest with the civil rights, feminist, and anti-Vietnam War movements. By the end of the decade, homosexuality would be added to the list of fought over rights. Additionally, the scare of McCarthyism led to the Lavender Scare, the widespread firing of homosexual employees, forcing people to hide their sexuality. Since homosexuals were viewed as sinful and perverted, many thought they shared characteristics with communists, labeling gays and lesbians as demonic and dangerous. There may be some here today that will be homosexual in the future. They can be anywhere. They can be judges, lawyers. We ought to know we've arrested all of them. So if any one of you have let yourself become involved with an adult homosexual or with another boy, and you're doing this on a regular basis, you better stop quick, because one out of three of you will turn queer. And if we catch you involved, with a homosexual, your parents are going to know about it first. And you will be caught. This is one thing that if you don't get caught by us, you'll be caught by yourself. And the rest of your life will be a living hell. In April 1953, President Eisenhower signed an order that banned homosexuals from working for the federal government, claiming that LGBT employees pose security risks. If they were living double lives, then they may not be trustworthy enough to keep government secrets. In this, many moved to cities to keep low profiles. With nowhere else to turn, many people flocked to Garnage Village, a hub for the gay community and home to many gay bars. Even here, however, many of these bars were subject to frequent raids done by the police, making homosexuals feel as if they had nowhere to turn. Stonewall was not a glamorous place, its interior dark and dirty, with watered-down alcohol and overflowing toilets. But it offered its patrons space, security, and freedom. In addition, the Mafia was running the bar, paying off the police. So while raids did continue, they were less frequent, with damage and arrests minimized. In a world that shunned gay people, Stonewall welcomed them with open arms. People would come together to let loose and feel unpersecuted. At the time, hundreds of young homosexuals lived on the streets. As said by Dick Leitch, a bar patron, for $3 admission to the Stonewall, one could stay inside out of the winter's cold or the summer sea all night long. It also saved kids from getting arrested. The night of the riots started like any other night at Stonewall, but this time Officer Seymour Pine, sick of watching his raids brushed off, sat outside with a plan of action that would ensure enough damage to leave them out of business for a few days. Around 1.20 in the morning, the raids began with four officers banging on the door of Stonewall, yelling, police, we're taking the place. As the violent police officers pushed their way through the bar's panicked crowd, nerves ran high, and while some knew the drill, others were fear-stricken. No one knew where the night would lead. Maria Ritter's recalls, 
The cops had gone into the back room and started pushing people out. I went to the bathroom hoping there was a window. I had this strange recollection of wanting to get the hell out of there. Police began forcing people outside and checking IDs, which many didn't have. Bar patrons were being aggressively pushed into patrol wagons, while others were being arrested around them. As tensions grew higher, a new mentality swept through the crowd, a mentality of defiance. Enough was enough. People began to talk back to the police, yelling, get your hands off me, don't touch me. Here began the descent into violent chaos. Songs of strength and defiance ran through the angry crowd. Accustomed to an easy crowd complying with their dominant actions, these acts of rebellion came as a surprise to the unprepared officers. As the crowd became rowdier and curious bystanders joined the fight, it became clear that the police were outnumbered. With rioters soon in the hundreds, Officer Pine admitted that the crowd had grown ten times the size. It was really frightening. Interviewed later, Pine said, So many showed up immediately. This night was different. Instead of the homosexuals slinking off, they stayed there and their friends came. Energetic and angry, the crowd began throwing objects around them at the police. Anything from coins to bricks and even trash cans went sailing through the air. In a matter of minutes, the scene had turned from unrest to explosive and violent. With a battle cry, the crowd surged forward. The riots were messy, spontaneous, and chaotic, with projectiles often hitting other patrons instead of police officers. At the height of its violence, Pine instructed his men to barricade themselves into the bar with hopes that more backup would soon arrive. Now the riot turned to the physical bar, shattering the windows and setting fires in an attempt to bring down the barricade. The crowd was relentless, sick of their oppressors and standing united in their fight for gay liberation and a new age of freedom. Author of Stonewall, David Carter, writes, The police assumed that since they were just dealing with a bunch of fairies, they would be unchallenged, found that it was as if they had suddenly and inexplicably metamorphosed into raging tigers. The period of violence and destruction was still a time of hope and great change. Only after three days of rioting did the crowd disperse and the riot ended. But the feelings of anger in the LGBTQ community and its refusal to accept harassment and oppression would not end there. Although the effects of the Stonewall riots were triumphant and revolutionary, that is not to negate the fact that the riots were nights filled with destruction and violence. On the first night alone, 13 people were arrested and many others sustained injuries. But on hindsight, that concentrated period of violence was worth it in the long run. are regarded by many as history's first major protest on behalf of equal rights for gay people. The monumental event is considered to be a major turning point in the gay rights movement, and in many ways the birth of the modern LGBTQ rights. So I, I would say that the historic significance of Stonewall is it directly inspired, it created a, move, a new movement, or it created, if you like, a new wave uh, of the, um, the organized homosexual rights movement. After Stonewall, the LGBTQ community became much more willing to openly assert their sexuality and opinions. As stated by activist Frank Kamney, before Stonewall, there's 50 to 60 gay groups in the country. Just two years later, there's 2,500. A few months after the riots, a commemorative march took place in New York, the first of its kind. Today, every year on the anniversary of the riots, gay pride marches occur all across America, attracting thousands. The riots also led to the founding of the Gay Liberation Front and Gay Activist Alliance. In 1999, the National Park Service placed the Stonewall Inn on the National Registry of Historic Places, and in 2016, President Obama designated the site of the riots as a national monument. Instituted in 1971, the Stonewall Book Award is now awarded to books that recognize the experience of the LGBTQ people. The riots were just a piece in the puzzle of the rights of the LGBTQ people in the U.S. It would be a long process, but thanks to the riots, a new mentality of acceptance was seeded in the minds of society. Today, there are still acts of violence committed against the gay community. In 2016, a shooter at a gay club in Orlando killed 49, and each day hate crimes continue. But slowly, progress has come for the homosexual community. Although there had been other resistances to occur in the past, Stonewall was unique. In the end, it lasted three days, attracted thousands, including the homeless street youth, plus it happened in New York, drawing in more publicity. Uniquely, the geography of the Greenwich Village had irregularly angled streets that created more gathering spaces and a disadvantage to police. Additionally, nearby subways and numerous phone lines made it easier for rioters to spread the word. The Stonewall riots were instrumental in a pivotal moment for the LGBTQ history, redirecting the downward spiral into a future of hope and security. Mm -hmm.